Hello everyone, welcome back to the Dolly Cam. I am here with the wonderful doll artist Susan Fosnott and we are here at the Region 12 uh, Doll Convention Show Regional here in Frankenmuth, Michigan and it is so much fun and um, I've been wanting to visit with Susan the entire show and now we have an opportunity so we're gonna chat with Susan. Feel free to show, uh, share the video, feel free to ask questions and uh, you're in for a treat. We're gonna see some amazing dolls so I'm gonna turn the camera around and we're gonna look at things so Susan how have you been having a great show so far I have and people here have been just wonderful how many regionals do you do throughout the year I don't do I, this is the, the only one I've done I was invited to do a souvenir for a luncheon and then they said well why don't you come and I mean the sales room of course come and hang yes. with us Yes, you and had so, one of the lunches, and um, I'm sure that the, I know that that one was highly attended, and I was uh, unfortunately here, I couldn't attend, but it sounded wonderful. We did something completely new for UFDC. We had, uh, every doll was different. And not really? Just, yeah. Every doll was different? Every doll was different. They were all from the same pattern, the same basic design, but we did all, I did all different ethnicities, so we had uh, Native American, African, Mexican, Asian, awesome. all the different. We had no white children, but all the all the brown people of the world all were the represented. Brown people. How wonderful! I, oh, I wish I could see some. Are you going to be posting any photos online, or they're gone? Yeah, they're gone. They're out there <laughs> they in the world. Went home. So hopefully, uh, people will be posting photos of theirs. So we're going to talk a little bit about your dolls that are in your booth. Your dolls are just so wonderful. They, I feel like you draw inspiration from a lot of places. But what's what kind of sparked your interest in? doing dolls in the in the very beginning um what happened was I inherited a box of baby dresses okay those pretty little fluffy ones from the 50s were mm -hmm. made in the Philippines of the fancy little place and stuff and I knew a woman I should have given who had made dolls and I thought I should give them to her and I kept not wanting to do it so I said well you better do something with these and I made dolls to fit these dresses to start with and then I did a show and someone said well I like that but I'd really rather have a small one and I was off and running and you were off and running and all of your dolls are cloth have you made them out of anything else uh, not in the last 24 years or so uh, previously I did all kinds of different things but now it's strictly cloth well I maybe it's not quite true because you classify a doll by the head you know, and by the face. Oh, these spoons so are the wonderful. Spoon I love the spoons. If you don't mind, can you pull a couple of the spoons out so we can see them a little bit better? These spoons are fantastic. These are spoon dolls by Susan Fosna, and these are absolutely dolls. A doll, there's a lot of interpretations on what, what makes a doll, but this is so much fun. I love it. Oh, and here's a dressed here's one. Here's one, the finished one. Oh my gosh, I love it. So how does somebody finish it? Do you have patterns that they can so, buy? So, okay, so they get the hand-painted face. Okay. With, which is a spoon, and then they get the pattern and the fabrics for the clothing and the fabrics for the body, and they make it. They and make it. That is so innovative. I just love it. And you have the spoons here for sale. Oh, they're just wonderful. Look at that. Get up close. What a fun idea. Did you just wake up one day and think, oh, you know what? I'm going to make a spoon doll, or did you see it somewhere else? Well, it's it's a it, I think it's an old idea mm -hmm. and it, there was something that had always been in the back of my mind something I had seen and you know I should have bought it then but I didn't right and uh, I finally just decided because I, I like to do kits I like to keep people involved in making the dolls mm -hmm. but I wanted something that would be easy and pretty much guaranteed successful right so you don't have to do anything with the face you know so it's not gonna... They're wonderful. And such an affordable way for somebody to make a doll if they wanted to do one themselves. It's just such a neat idea. I've seen them made out of um, upside down paintbrushes before too, where the hair was the, the, the paintbrush was the hair. And they were just absolutely wonderful. So yeah, there's a lot of fun ideas. But I just love that. And so you can see how you can put the spoon on the body right over there. Yeah, here's an undressed one. How simple the body really Love is. It. So she is just a spoon. Just a spoon. And oh, uh, wow. the, hat, the hat then is really just a strip of fabric, and it's gathered at one side and then gathered around the face. How Very neat. simple. Well, be careful who you call just a spoon because sometimes they grow up to look like these. That's right. <laughs> they are wonderful. So Susan, what is it about uh, this look, this wonderful, I don't want to say Isanna Walker inspired look, but this early kind of cottage look that just does it for you? 
it's I, I can't even tell you it's just me mm -hmm. it's just where I live it's who I am I'm I'm I can't really claim being totally a naive artist I did go to art school it was during the period where they didn't teach art in art school it was just oh be, be, use your own thing mm -hmm. I learned to gesso a canvas and then little by little I got I got more interested in um, in pursuing the portrait the portrait aspect of it uh, and it's, I guess in school I did do more portraiture and then it just I guess because I can do sculpture and it seems like there's a limit mm -hmm. to what you can do mm -hmm. I mean you have the form that's it right the, 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 it's either there or it's not but with the, the painted surface you can suggest mm -hmm. It seems like it brings you more into a different world, into the doll world, than a truly sculptural form. Right, absolutely. Uh, your dolls, when you look at them, they are just like tiny worlds and tiny people that tell a story. Each one is different, and the faces are so three-dimensional. It's just incredible. Absolutely incredible. Do you do any painting that's outside of dolls? I don't. Yeah. Why bother when you can make dolls? <laughs> well, I don't really like the square, the rectangle the white rectangle mm -hmm. bothers me. Right. I just I don't know how to approach it. But once I make a, a shape for a head, then I know then where I am. you can do it. So great. So we're going to take a peek in your booth. Oh, I see that you also have some fun buttons. Oh, these so the, these buttons go on the dolls. Those are pins. Oh, they're pins. Okay. If you guys are just tuning in, we are in the booth of doll artisan Susan Fosnott. She is very well known in the artisan and doll community. She had the souvenir doll a couple years ago in Kansas City at UFDC. Everyone is very familiar with her dolls. We've never done an interview with her, so this is just so much fun. Susan, I see that you have you have a you do everything from young women to adults to children to babies. Have you ever made any men? Oh, sure. Well, I don't do adult men. You're right. I haven't. I've done boys. Little boys. Little boys. But I don't do adult men, and I can't tell you why. Yeah, well, that's okay. <laughs> you, don't, <laughs> you don't have to have a reason. There's a little boy right there. So sweet. Now, do you do them in stages, or when you paint a face, do you just go for it and get the whole thing done in one go? Uh, no, usually once I've made the form, the head or the head and torso, mm -hmm. I draw the face on and then I let it sit for a day or two. I come back and I say, well, that's not quite where I'd want it. I want the nose a little farther over here. I want the mouth higher because each head is a little different. And since they're not truly uh, lifelike, mm -hmm. there's a little interpretation to where should everything go and how should it look. So I, I let that take some time and then I start painting and I'll get most of it done in one setting and then it'll be several more settings to do the fine detail and the little little changes that it'll need. Wonderful. I just love, love, love. Is, is this a Japanese the, face? The model for that was Asian Norwegian. Asian Norwegian. Wonderful. You have so many different ethnicities. Is it hard for you to uh, paint a new ethnicity when you haven't done it before or does it just kind of flow? It's fun. Yeah. Yeah. You like a challenge. Well, I like um, the classic features of different ethnicities. I like, you know, the full lips, the broad nose mm -hmm. of the Africans. I like the narrowed, mm -hmm. deep set eyes in the Asians. I just find it very interesting. Yes, it is so interesting. Now, when you're doing, say, um, a, a darker cloth or a darker complected doll, do you do you try first to paint the face on a, a piece of canvas or something like that? Because the, the the paint doesn't always show up the same when you're mixing it and, and doing stuff like that. I, I'm just saying the shading, that's got to be a kind of a hard thing to master. Um, it depends on the paint. The, the, when I use acrylics, it's very difficult because they change color so much as they dry. Mm -hmm. The oils stay more true. True. Mm -hmm. But there's different ways I do it. Okay, this one, this is a sample for a workshop I'll be doing in Phoenix this summer. Ooh, at the is convention. It, are there any spots open? 
I don't know. I don't you have know. to go through United Federation yeah. of Dow. Contact Sport. UFDC and get in this okay. workshop. So we're going to be doing the face. And the face is done with watercolor pencils and Pigma pen on this brown fabric. Mm. So the brown fabric makes the color of the skin. Mm -hmm. Or is okay. this and this one right. here? Right. This one's painted. Okay. Now this one here is painted in oils. The fabric under that is white. Mm. So there's layers of first there's gesso and then there's layers of paint to, to bring up the color. Just much different approach. Completely different approach. Is watercolor harder than oil or vice vice versa? Um, this this is quick and relatively easy. Mm -hmm. This is much more difficult, and it's more difficult because it's small too. Can we see the back of the head just to see a little bit of the construction and, and the hair? This one you don't see too much construction, but I'll show you this one. See, the hair is really simply painted with sponge. Oh, that makes it easy. Yeah. Yeah, fun. Yeah. But it doesn't look like a sponge. It looks like hair. Hair. That's very neat. Do you have you ever made a doll that had any kind of applied hair or applied wig, or are they all you know, painted I don't on? Do that. Um, no, I don't. I and I don't know why, because I was looking and say, boy, that really worked out when somebody right. else does it. It really looks nice. I like it, but yeah. I don't do it. That's okay. <laughs> You might. Do you ever see something and you think, you know, I'm going to try that, and then you try it and it doesn't work? Oh, sure. Yeah. Sure. I think um, when, when we have budding artists and people tuning in that, that see somebody as accomplished and well-known as your work, um, they think that, oh, it just it just happens, it just and, happens and you and you well. haven't had any failure, and you I haven't know, had yeah. any, people any, think that, any bumps in the road. It's yeah. not true. No, it's not true. There's no. always a bump in the There's road. There's always a bump in the um, road. A lot of, until, you, until you're until you're copying yourself mm -hmm. okay copying yourself which i'm not there yet and i i will never go there it's too boring um everything is a process of do something and then correct it and do a little something more and correct it and then bring the things together it's mm -hmm. always uh an evolution mm -hmm. of uh, uh success and failure balanced together yes and that's what makes them good and that, that is what makes them good i love what you said that is so very very true I love that you have full-size women in small sizes. You've got large babies and toddlers. Oh, look at the way the hair is painted on this one. That is so much fun. So much fun. We have a lot of people tuning in from all over the world that couldn't be here today that are uh, getting to see these wonderful dolls in the dolly cam. Susan, if somebody wanted to get a hold of you, what is the best way to do that if they wanted to buy a doll or, or ask you a question? Email is best. Okay. Fosnotdolls at hotmail.com. Perfect. Fosnotdolls at hotmail.com. A lot we've had a lot of um, our Ruby Lane sellers have listed your dolls on the on the artisan lane at Ruby Lane and they always go immediately. <laughs> so I don't think we even have any listed right now because they always sell. We're just giving another little pan here. Again, we are in the booth of doll artist Susan Fosnott, and she just has incredible pieces. I've always admired them, and what a wonderful interview. I encourage you to watch this again because she said some very inspiring things. If you're a doll artist and you're, you're figuring out what to do, where to start, do you have any tips out there for a for a, a doll artist or somebody that's just not knowing what to do and maybe wanting to get started, something you could have told yourself 24 years ago. Mm, good question. Um, do the work. Yeah, it's work. Get some materials, mm -hmm. try something, doesn't work, try something else. Doesn't work as well as you want to, how do you improve it? Just right. keep doing the work. I will improve. Exactly. I once asked a writer, well, how do you become a writer? And he said, well, you right. start writing. Yeah. You start writing and that's how you do it and you keep writing. Uh -huh. Yeah. So you just keep doing it. Well, wonderful. Thank you, Susan, for showing us your body of work. It's so incredible. And again, here is her They can also go to my website, www.susanfaznotdolls.com. Perfect. Thank you so much. We will link to that. Appreciate it. Have a great evening. Thank you.